22 countries line the Mediterranean Sea. That's 22 different countries fighting crime linked to their history and laws. In Spain, Barcelona is facing a surge in pickpocketing and petty crime, linked to increasing tourism in the country's third largest commercial port. In Israel, Haifa, the largest port city in the country, faces a different kind of criminal activity. In Haifa, crimes are the result of the state's strict religious laws and protectionism. On patrol in two port cities on the Mediterranean coast, dealing with very different criminal issues. Barcelona, the second largest city in Spain and capital of Catalonia. One of the trendiest cities in Europe, it receives upwards of 27 million tourists per year who come in search of the sea, sun, and cultural fun. Las Ramblas is the city's most famous street and a tourist magnet. Here, the money is pouring in. But just a stone's throw away, you come to El Raval, a working class neighborhood. Barcelona has a large tourist and commercial port. An immense number of people and products flow in and out. It's no wonder the city attracts petty crime. Spain has always had a bad reputation as a place full of pickpockets and thieves targeting tourists. To put an end to this reputation, the Mossos de Esquadra was introduced eight years ago. The Mossos de Esquadra is the autonomous police force of Catalonia. It replaced the Spanish National Police. The Mossos de Esquadra has a motorbike patrol unit that can respond in record time anywhere in the city. Albert Lorenzo heads up the motorcycle unit. Albert joined the police 16 years ago and has been in charge of this squadron for two years. He's got 16 bikers under his command who constantly patrol the city's streets. Today, he's going to supervise them from his car. His right-hand woman, Eva, is with him. Here in Barcelona, we see a very specific type of crime at the beginning of the summer. It's not really dangerous, but, well, for example, we see people on motorbikes and mopeds puncturing car tires while they're at red lights, especially cars with foreign license plates. They act like they're trying to help the driver helping them with some kind of mechanical problem. And then, when the driver is distracted, they reach into the passenger side and steal a bag. And then they speed off. Thieves adapt throughout the day, depending on what the tourists are doing. Albert has just been called to El Raval. Clearly, something serious has happened. Well, it's not very clear, but apparently several units have called for backup because there's a serious situation. The only information Albert has received is that officers are being attacked. He's very nervous. Backup officers had cordoned off the area in a matter of minutes. Albert centralizes the information. It's still not clear. We still don't know anything. The only thing Albert can see is a young man unmoving on the ground. He'll soon know more as a witness comes forward. Did you see something? He's over there. It's a friend of mine. Okay, so call him and get him over here. No, the one on the ground. Oh, okay. okay. No, wait here. Wait here. 
Wait here. Wait here. We're here. Okay, that's fine. Albert soon comes to grips with the situation. The backup officers arrive quickly enough to prevent the brawl from escalating, but it was a close call. Okay, so some people that live in this area were fighting. The officers intervened, and one of the people fighting attacked the officers. We've arrested them for assault for attempting to harm an officer. It's a lot calmer now. An ambulance is coming for the victim, who's there on the ground. The unconscious victim is quickly treated by the EMTs. Albert has first aid training and helps the medical team. Thankfully, the teen on the ground is going to be okay. Haifa is considered the capital of northern Israel. Its port is the largest in the country and sees 26 million tons of freight pass through it each year. The city's economy attracts people from all over the world, but they also come for the weather. Haifa boasts some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Just like the city, the police force is made up of people from all backgrounds and religions. The central police station is located in the city's industrial zone. Like every other morning, the units are being debriefed about the day. Bahia has been an officer for 10 years and is the captain of this unit. Unit 416, Tomer and Israel. Uh, Tomer, stay in the upper part of town. You have to go and see a person who claims they've been threatened. So go and take their statement and make sure everything's okay. Like he does at the beginning of every patrol, Bahia checks out his weaponry. The state of Israel is constantly under threat of terrorist attack. Bahia has to carry a weapon of war so he can respond to anything thrown at him. There are emergency situations that we have to deal with that are part of everyday life here in Israel. And there are also completely unexpected situations that arise, so it's better to be carrying an M16. Today, Bahia is alone in his vehicle. As the unit's leader, he coordinates all the patrol units on duty in the city from his car. With my tablet, I know what's going on and where and I can send the information to the nearest patrol unit. Something has happened not far from his current position. Bahia has to respond himself. The information he's received is unclear. Unit 403, a patrol unit is needed at the gas station. Which gas station? We don't currently have that information. Please speak to the person who called it in and ask them which gas station. There's been a robbery at a service station. Bahia doesn't know anything else and has to get to the scene quickly. Yet, he doesn't use his siren. It's not an emergency. If someone's life was in danger or if it was a terrorist attack or something like that, I would turn on my siren and speed to the scene. Arrived at the scene of the crime, Bahia struggles to understand what has happened. It's a strange one. Someone has stolen a car wash machine. You see the machine on the ground? He lifted it up and took the part he wanted. Okay. Why did he do that? Because he wanted the part. And this machine belongs to you? Of course it belongs to me. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> it's clear that an individual came with a digger to take the part and destroyed everything else. The victim knows the man. He's just called him, but he's denying it was him. He said it wasn't him. But look, we've got cameras. We filmed it. 
Can you see it on the tapes? Can you see everything? Of course. Okay. Bahia will watch the footage from the surveillance camera so he can get a better idea of what happened here. Upstairs, he asks the owner to show him the footage. Once he sees it, he understands what happened. The car wash station was out of order, in ruins even. The men with the digger came and salvaged parts. While watching the surveillance footage, Bahia learns that the suspect has returned to the scene of the crime. To prevent the fight from breaking out, he heads downstairs as quickly as he can. When you were here, you should have asked me. You should have asked me if you could have the part or not. But it's abandoned like that. Anyone could have it. Who told you you could have it? Look at all the parts. Is it just me or are they abandoned? Let me see your ID. No, no one gave you permission to take it. That's got nothing to do with it. The digger's mine. But the part is mine. Okay, look, I'm sorry for taking the part. Bahia understands now. It's what we could call a communication issue. It's a car wash machine that's been left to rot. So the individual came and took some parts, some aluminum. But the guy who owns all this junk says, why didn't you ask me before taking it? Now, the two men start bargaining, both of them using bad faith to try and make the most of the situation. He says that if the thief pays for damages, he won't press charges. What damage? Did he cause any damage? I don't know. He took the machine apart. Now tell him we're not getting involved. Tell him we're not getting involved in that. The police doesn't negotiate payment for damages or deal with money issues. Let's go. Yeah. It's early summer in Barcelona, and the top priority for the Mossos de Esquadra is keeping tourists safe. This morning, Albert is being debriefed by his superior. It's summertime, so we're going to focus on our tourist areas. Thank you, thank you. Today we're going on patrol in Barceloneta. Barceloneta is a coastal area of the city. Originally home to Barcelona's fishermen, it has been completely redeveloped and now boasts a beautiful sandy beach close to the city center. It's a must-visit place for tourists and pickpockets. Today, Albert's unit will make their presence known they'll monitor the beach and park in plain sight. A doubly effective tactic that reassures tourists and puts off thieves. One day we caught a particularly tricky thief. He would set up his towel beside his chosen victim and then steal their personal belongings using a wire. But no one ever noticed they were being robbed. So it took us a long time to find him. But after many reports by victims and plenty of witness statements, we finally got him in the end. Albert and Eva move on after a few minutes. Not far from the beach, they're called over to the exit of a parking lot. The manager explains. A man scratched their car. Just look. I think they wanted money from the man. I think they wanted the guy to give them money, but he wouldn't. They wanted to negotiate, but the guy wouldn't hear of it, so they called the police. So, wait, was it a car crash? No, not at all. As they passed, they scratched the car a tiny bit. Can you see? It's all they did. 
Okay, I'll talk to them. My dad is a lawyer and I had an accident okay, in Germany Okay, I am too. a police. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is a random... Why do you say to me that your father is a lawyer? Uh, just want to, say, to that. say that I know this situation and okay. that it did okay. happen to me too. Uh, your father is here? No, in okay. Germany. Okay. Because we no are problem. from Germany. I don't want to know anything about your father. I want to know about you and your car, okay? It's not my car, it's a rental car. We just want to have this accident paid yes. because, in our opinion, the other person yes. made this fault and crashed our car. Yes, but uh, you, uh, have you an insurance? Um, normally, yes. normally in, in Spain, all the cars has an insurance, okay? And the other car, uh, I, I think, I hope, uh, two, okay? And then, if you, uh, if you are not agree uh, with the, uh, the other person, yeah. okay, uh, you have to uh, call to your uh, Ryan uh, Enterprise, okay, and explain what has it happened. Are you okay? In fact, procedures are different in Germany and in Catalonia. Here, you don't call the police for a little problem like that. Most of the time, these situations solve themselves. The problem is that these boys are foreign. They don't understand the rules here in Catalonia. So we have to explain them. Sometimes they don't understand. Sometimes they don't want to understand. But here, they understood. So they're meeting with the appropriate person in two hours to file a report. Today, Bahia isn't acting as a unit leader, rather as a simple patrol officer. He's getting his patrol kit ready. We have suits and helmets that protect us from hazardous materials, special suits. Bahia carries all the equipment he may need for an operation in his sector in the trunk of his car, including everything he'd need to create a roadblock to prevent terrorists from entering. It's a spike strip for a roadblock. With him today, Hanun, a 27-year-old Christian Israeli Arab. They know each other well and share a common factor. Neither of them is Jewish. Their duty is to Israel. The state of Israel might be Jewish, but I'm Druze and my colleague is Christian. Despite our beliefs, we're all from the same country. We served our country in the military, and we've continued after that, and we'll keep serving it. It's our country, and we all feel the same way. No one says you're Christian, you're Druze, you're Jewish. We're united. In Haifa, religious belief doesn't matter. Israel does. If the officers have to arrest a Jewish criminal, they will, as we'll soon see. We don't know what the problem is, but we're not going to wait around to find out. We're going to intercept them. There's a car closer than Bahia and Anun. They follow the arrest on the radio. Their role is to help their colleagues and make sure the criminal can't get away. The first team arrives on the scene and quickly arrests the suspect. The man is a well-known burglar, but he is almost here. In the meantime, the patrol officers search the criminal's possessions. His only belongings are a few bits in a plastic bag and an old bike. The patrol unit takes the man to the station. This man steals things all the time. He goes into houses and steals things. He's a thief. Every day, he steals. I'm here, Ravi. Rami, is everything okay? How are you? Oh yeah? We searched his bag. The man is clearly a kleptomaniac. He needs to steal, and despite having already been in trouble for his actions, he can't help himself. Come on, we'll get in the other side. This way. Come on. Uh, 
What did you have in your hand? Everything's fine. He's going to be interrogated at the station. He'll be questioned and they'll decide whether or not to arrest him. If he has to appear in court, a judge will decide whether to sentence him or set him free. Just warn him and do what you have to. Bye. The man will be taken to the station by the first unit on the scene. But with his record, he'll probably be jailed right away. The man we arrested earlier, Rami, he's at the station now with the other team. Look what we found on him, in his bag. The bag he had with him. They're tools. This is a typical burglar's toolkit. With these tools, they can break in anywhere. Bahia and Anun's patrol continues. Their mission, make sure there are no fires in vulnerable areas. That area went up in flames two weeks ago. All the trees are scorched there. Two weeks ago, a series of arson attacks devastated the city. Terrorists took advantage of the city's dry spell and windy temperature and started several fires simultaneously. The fires encircled the city and led to the evacuation of close to 75,000 residents. The country is on maximum alert. The wind wasn't responsible for most of the fires. They were started by criminals. The police closed off the city to ensure the arsonists couldn't get away. A few days ago, they managed to arrest one who hit the police roadblock. No, no, wait! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! One second, where's your car? Where's your car? Gently, take it easy. We're back in Barcelona, in the areas most popular with tourists. This place is called Born, the Born Promenade. That's the Cathedral del Mar there in front of us. There are lots of bars and restaurants here, pizzerias, that kind of thing. It gets really busy around 9 or 10 p.m. A lot of bags get snatched around here. Thieves walk up beside people, girls in particular, girls who are carrying handbags, and all of a sudden they go up to them and violently snatch their bags. And then they run off down these alleys where they can easily make their getaway. Another favorite hunting ground for pickpockets is the metro. Here, there are no officers on bikes and no officers in uniform, just two undercover armed officers. Their mission is to spot pickpockets and arrest them. We always have to be armed. You never know what might happen. There are lots of ways to carry a weapon. For example, my colleague carries his gun there, and I carry mine in my bag. I've got a telescopic baton in there as well, just in case. The undercover officers travel between the metro stations most used by tourists. Pickpockets take advantage of crowds to steal wallets, cell phones, and cameras. The officers spread out and signal to each other if they spot anyone suspicious, like now. The man in orange shorts is acting strange. He keeps looking to the left and the right. They follow the suspect who fits the profile of a pickpocket. But a few minutes later, 
they realized they were wrong. In general, pickpockets don't really take care of their appearance. They'll be wearing scruffy clothes. That's what caught our attention. Still within the metro, the officers come across a man they've seen many times before. They're going to check he's not carrying any stolen materials. Well, what's in the bag? Flip-flops. Just flip-flops, that's all. Can you come over here, please? That's my phone. Oh, no, no, not that one. This one is mine. It's the same as mine, you see? And whose is this one? I got it for my son. It's a different brand. Mine's this one. Yeah, it's old. But they both work? But this one has a card. No, no, that's all I have. Okay, you don't have anything else on you? All right, thanks. It was just a guy who was hanging around there. We checked him. He's often begging for money and other stuff. We always check to try to see if it's their phone, because often they're stolen. They could have gotten them illegally. So we check if the phone works. Sometimes we turn it off and on again, so they have to put the code in. That's what we normally do. The Metro Patrol unit hasn't caught anyone today. But since its introduction, the number of pickpockets has reduced. The long-awaited rain finally pours over Haifa. It will soak into the ground and prevent any further terrorist fires. It's going to be a long, wet day. Liran, 38, father of three, is leading two patrol units. Given the recent terrorist attacks, he's on high alert. There have been shots fired, and there are people fleeing the scene. Shots were heard a few blocks from here, close to a shopping mall. A security guard comes over to Liran right away. Hi, everything okay? Hello. We were over there and we heard something like an explosion. There were flames. We heard two shots. The first, then it stopped, then a second, and that was it. This area is closed. Liran collects witness statements from the mall's employees. We work here at Hyundai. That's why we were here. We were talking, we just finished work, and then that happened. It turns out a power pole exploded. Everything's fine, no one's injured, no gunshots. We received a call about gunfire. People around here ran for cover because they thought there was gunfire. But after we looked around, it turned out that a power pole had exploded. The gunshots, the power pole explosion, they were the same thing. We spoke to the caller. The fire and ambulance services were here, but there were no injuries. The electricity company will come out and take over. People are shaking, but at least there are no injuries. In Haifa, the recent arson attacks have left the population tense. Thankfully, things are getting back to normal quickly. Given the security situation in the country right now, whenever there's a noise, even firecrackers, people think, or rather they imagine, that it's gunfire. And they panic. They call the police, the fire department, and the ambulance service. 
Israel has been at war with neighboring Arab states and in particular with Palestine since its creation in 1948. To increase military numbers, military service is mandatory in Israel. Three years for men, two years for women, from age 18. We have to pay a visit to a girl who didn't show up for her medical exam. It's part of the enrollment procedure for her military service. In Israel, avoiding military service is a criminal offense. They first have to attend a medical exam when they're 16. If they still haven't had their medical by age 17, official procedures are initiated against a teen. Liran is a police instructor and is used to these kinds of situations. He knows exactly what to say to this minor. It's 8.30 p.m. The teen should be at her parents' house. Good evening. Sorry to disturb you. Is Bar here? I'm Bar. How are you? Fine, thanks. Nice to meet you. I'm Liran. Are you her father? Yes. She was supposed to attend her medical at the Army Recruitment Center. Well, she'll go tomorrow. This is an arrest warrant, okay? I'm just showing you. Okay. We're not arresting you. We're not the military police. We're giving you an invite for tomorrow, okay? We're counting on you to show up and wishing you luck with your military service. So we can count on you, right? The father clearly knows what's going on. He's been reminded about his daughter's duty to undertake military service, but he doesn't want to talk about it. What time will you be there tomorrow? 10 a.m., is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Good evening, then. Good luck. Bye. Liran is confident. They reacted calmly. He's giving her one last chance and counting on her patriotism. The weekend has started, and Albert and Eva will be patrolling on two wheels. Petty crime will be on the rise, and they have to be able to respond as quickly as possible. Today, they're working from 2 p.m. until midnight. Their first mission, Barcelona prison. One of the inmates is suspected of carrying illegal substances. As there are no female guards at the prison, Eva will have to search the woman. The mission is soon completed. Everything is fine. I searched her and she didn't have any illegal substances. But she was hit on the head during the arrest and they did x-rays to be sure she's okay. And it seems that she's fine. Everything's all right. Traveling around Barcelona on two wheels is the best way for them to quickly get from place to place. The roads in Barcelona are some of the busiest in Europe. Albert's unit is especially effective at responding to emergency calls in the Catalan capital. Foxes are quick, cautious animals. And when they have to act, they act fast. Just like these bikers. I really like leading this group. They're a great bunch of people who do a great job. The motorbike unit is about to prove how effective it is. Albert has just been called to Barceloneta, where there's been a robbery. Albert arrives on the scene in under three minutes. He's acting as backup to two other officers on foot. The thief is on the ground. 
Witnesses have immobilized him. Your hand, give me your hand. Please take the phone. Please, please. How many did he have? I don't know. No, it's all my mother's, really. Everything, it's my mother's. It's not mine, it's my mother's. It's all my mother's. Eva takes the victim to one side to take his statement. A six foot two Dutchman that wouldn't let him get away with it. He's strong and angry. He's the one that held the thief down. So he was defending this guy. So that's what. Can you see me? Where's my necklace? It was my necklace was ripped down on my throat. It was a cross, so he ripped it off me. So we hunt him. And get. And uh, three guys. Three guys. Three guys again. Okay. No, was coming around like this. Rip it off. Okay. So. Be quiet, Mister. Be quiet. Okay. Yeah. We are okay. We are working. He's arrested. Okay. It's your work. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Are you okay? Yes. We have called ambulance. Uh, no, 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 no. Yes. Not for me, but for him. I didn't take anything. I didn't take nothing. I didn't take anything. You shut up. A simple identity check reveals that the thief already has a record for similar offenses. For the time being, everything's under control. We have one suspect who was involved in the crime, and there were two others, but they got away. In Haifa, it's the night before the Shabbat, the Israelis' day of rest. Tonight, the city's residents are out in force. Restaurants, nightclubs and bars. But they also head out to illegal establishments. Eli is in charge tonight. He's coordinating a special operation. In a hidden away neighborhood, he's going to search this discreet establishment. From the outside, you'd have no idea what's taking place inside. It's a brothel. The prostitutes panic when they see the cameras. Here, young women, including Muslims, work in total secrecy. For some of them, having their identity revealed would be a death sentence. They're very nervous. It's a long time before they calm down. Where's the one that ran away? Cover your heads. We're currently in a brothel in the industrial area. It's a place you can come and pay for sex acts. When we came, we arrested some girls that work here, and the bosses and the clients who were here paying for the services. Once the people present have been arrested, the police search their property. Look at these rooms. This is what I like. In all, four dirty bedrooms, a faux chic lounge, and a communal shower. One second. Wait, wait. Come on, we're going to clean up. Come here, come here. Bring them through here. The customers and owners leave their heads covered. In Israel, brothels and prostitution are strictly forbidden. The first guy is the brothel manager. The second is a customer who was there for sexual services. In Israel, 12,000 women work in prostitution. Over half of them are mothers and 10% are minors. A statistic the authorities and police are hoping to reduce, but it's a game of cat and mouse. You have to understand, in this business, they open, we close them down. It's a constant battle. As soon as the closure notice expires, they reopen. We come back again and close them. Then they open up again. As soon as the pressure's off, another brothel would open. Tonight, it's a lightning raid operation. 
Ili and his team will search other locations on their list. They can't wait around. Brothel owners stick together and warn each other when the police are around. The intimidation unit. He teams up with Mansour, the head of a specialized unit. This unit is responsible for show of strength operations. This brothel has less of a sordid atmosphere. It's clearly been operating for a long time. A strip club, erotic paintings, and private rooms. It's clear what goes on within these walls. There's only one way this establishment could have been operational for this long. The owner must have found a way around Israeli law. Do you want to come and see the rooms? So this is a bedroom, not a massage room like they're claiming. That's not for massages. You can clearly see it's a room where sexual services are being bought. It's not for massages. We've been here several times before because this establishment doesn't have the permits or authorizations it needs to operate. And brothels are forbidden. Massage parlors are not forbidden, and there are permits for that. And there really are people who work in the massage industry. But given the number of complaints we've had about this establishment, we knew this wasn't a real massage parlor. Here there's alcohol, stripping, and sex. It's time for the officers to take the thief to the station. We'll take him in now and do the statements and everything, okay? Get up, okay? Let's go. Come on. It's not a circus here. Get in, get in. If you tell me who did it, you can go. No? Okay, take him in. Now, the victim has to agree to press charges. If he doesn't, the police can keep the thief in custody. Uh, mister, do you want to report? <laughs> of course. Yes, of course. Okay, now in a few moments, uh, we will take uh, your report here. Okay? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and you, course, you have, you have to explain uh, what has happened, okay? Yeah, and course. how many persons has uh, oh, still your yeah. your necklace, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, no problem. Okay? Yeah. Uh, if you, uh, if you yeah. want, uh, we, we have called the uh, ambulance. No, no, no. no, no I yes, yes. But here in Spain, <coughs> and the ambulance has to check a little bit your neck, and you are okay, okay? Yeah. Your, your, your arms, okay? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have to call. Do you understand me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Albert is insisting that they call an ambulance because this chain snatching was particularly violent. In this case, he's required by law. You can't chase three guys. Yeah. You have to chase one. Yeah, of course. So uh, I chose one. Yeah. And I took one. When the Dutchman jumped on the thief, the two others turned on him and hit him with this iron bar. But the man didn't let go. I don't feel good because it's my mother's necklace. She died about 30 years ago. That's all. What do you say? It's the last gift she gave me. Albert sends his two-wheeled units down the neighboring streets to try and find the other two thieves. He's soon called by an officer that has stopped a suspect. When he saw the police, he fled through a door in an alley. The unit stopped him to see if he's one of the thieves. The man has no documentation on him. 
He claims to be a Syrian refugee. It's not one of the thieves. The officers let him go. Albert and Eva won't arrest the other thieves tonight. But having one of them in custody leads to others' arrest a few days later. The necklace won't ever be found. But at least, these three thieves will be taken off the streets and won't be able to hurt anyone else for a while. In Israel, brothels are illegal. Casinos are also prohibited, but that doesn't stop clandestine establishments from flourishing. There are people who are addicted to gambling. They don't think twice about going to these types of establishments, like the one we're going to now. When there is demand, you can always find supply. Eli heads down a dead-end street. There's a steel door at the end. Open the door. Open up. It's locked. Inside, there's a room that looks like an office. Come on, stop what you're doing. Turn on the lights. <laughs> this woman is so devastated to be caught here. It's they've uncovered an illegal casino. Bring her a glass of water. She knows she's been caught gambling, red-handed. She could be facing up to a year's jail time. Take all the cameras down. Here, they gamble on computers. There's a cashier who takes bets and gives out winnings. Mansour, head of the intimidation unit, seizes all the IT equipment and cameras. The police find a hard drive in the suspended ceiling. It's a DVR. It films everyone who comes in and out. It'll be great courtroom evidence against the manager of this establishment. Just sit there, please. Several minutes have passed, but the woman still hasn't calmed down. She's not even in serious trouble. She'll only be slapped with a fine. The owners are taken into custody. Police operations primarily target them, not the customers. Okay, let's get everything together. Take everything and collect the money. Similarly to the brothels, illicit casino owners warn each other about the police. So they have to raid establishments quickly. This time, a gambling system is installed at a first floor apartment. Here, customers have access to real slot machines. It's more than clear what goes on in this room. Casinos are forbidden in Israel because of the extremely influential religious parties that are active in the country. Yet, as the country is facing declining tourism, the authorities are planning on opening official casinos. But it's a power struggle. Come on, let's go. I'll take two arrestees with me. Avi, take two with you. You and you, you two are coming with me. We're fighting against the managers, not the gamblers. The gamblers get a warning. We take them in, we question them, remind them gambling is forbidden. But our daily fight is against those running the casinos. Here, business is clearly booming, and the money is flowing illegally and out of the state's hands. It's a lot of money. They can make thousands, millions even. It's not a one-night operation. A place like this is a day-to-day -day operation. We came out early, in the middle of the night. You saw how many computers there were, and they were all being used. We chose to shut the establishment down early, so there weren't that many clients. If you come here around 2 or 3 a.m., the parking lot will be full. 
The police acted before the influx of gamblers. They're not out to get the gamblers, just the people profiting from their addiction. It's time to go home. For Eli, these are essential operations. You know, they tried to introduce a bill to legalize casinos, to develop tourism in Elat. If one day a casino is built in Eliat, there will be strict rules in place for Israelis. The amount of time they can visit and the opening hours will be restricted, as will the amount they can bet. On the other hand, there'll be no restrictions for tourists. Legalizing casinos isn't something that will be voted in tomorrow. For the time being, the religious parties won't let that happen. On both sides of the Mediterranean, the police patrols and acts. In Barcelona, the two-wheeled patrol unit is successfully reducing petty crime statistics. In Haifa, different police units work together to ensure the city's safety. In these two cities that border the Mediterranean, patrol units are essential in upholding the law. <laughs> 